So in the last time we have started the discussion about the definitions of GIS. OK, so in the discussion we found that uh, the GIS has been defined in a very different ways by the different people. First of all, we have seen the general definition of the GIS, how it will be perceived by different type of people, whether it is a common people, whether it is a whether it is a decision maker, some community group, some management person, some utility per, company person, if there is some scientist, some investigator and so on. So these are the different ways how GIS can in general be perceived by different people. After that, we have seen some of the standard definition given by different people. Among them, the definition of borough is quite popular. Okay. Thereafter, we have seen the evolution of GIS about the different milestones that are achieved by the GIS. So very well, first one is the formative years. OK, so in the formative years. Um, OK, instead of I am telling you everything, uh, any one of you, any one of you, please come forward and discuss about what you have learned about these three different eras in the formative years, in the maturing of technology and the, in the age of information infrastructure. Okay. Sunil Kumar. Sunil. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think so. I'm not audible to Sunil. Okay, then I'm moving to someone else. Shiva. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Shiva. So can you discuss some of the things that we have learned in the evolution of GIS? You must have written something in your notebook, isn't it? Open your notebook, take the help of that one and discuss some of the important milestones that I have achieved by the GIS during this time period. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Shivam? Yeah, wait. Uh, two minutes, ma'am. Just whenever you join the class, come up with your notebook, okay? Okay, ma'am. Signal can't count. Wait a minute. I will come to you for the next time, but this one is my general advice to everyone. Prepare your notebook properly, although I have told you this thing earlier also. Prepare your notebook properly, whether it is of GIS technology course or whether it is of laboratory session. OK, it will help you. Otherwise, it will be a problem for you to recollect all the things. Over the time, there will be so many different concepts, and this one is a quite a new thing that you are learning nowadays. So prepare a proper notebook and even after the lecture session, try to add anything that you find important that is, you know, that is need to be written down. When we are in a physical mode, you know, we are in the classroom and students are writing something. But in this mode, you know, it, a lot of responsibility is at your own side because we are not able to see what you are doing. Okay, and it will not be proper 
like if after every end of every lecture if i ask from every each one of you to show your notebook and other things so this is a post graduate class so i'm not going to do that thing so a responsibility lie on you prepare your notebook very properly and you will see the effect of this thing in the november or december when there is an end semester of examination so okay i am coming back to the evolution and you know in the very first era which is of formative years in the formative years which is from 1960s to 70s we have seen that the concept was started with the cgis canadian geographic information system which was developed for the cli canadian land inventory okay it was government of canada project and roger tomlinson has headed that team that's why Roger Tomlinson is also known as the father of GIS because he has started the GIS development or he has given the very first example of full fledged computer based CGIS so after that there are some other initiatives in this era also like which we have already seen in this particular table that there was a concept of automated mapping which comes under the gis there are different types of mapping like web mapping that we will learn in the next semester but a major part of gis involves the mapping so in 1957 there, there was a very first automated mapping system 1963 cgis was conceptualized and initiated you know 63 it was initiated in 72 it was completed remember these two different years in 1963 the cgis development was started okay so there are so many different uh, events that have taken in the era of innovation or the in the year of formative years so some of them like dime dual this in 1967 us census bureau have given this dime format so what is dime it is dual independent map encoding this one is a data structure and it is used for creating the street database so these are the initial years then several companies in the commercial front we have seen that there are several companies which are related to the development and production of gis software has been established among them one of the most popular is isri environmental system research institute which was established by jack dagamon and laura dagamon in california united states in the year 19, 1969 till now we have used their product the arcgis software which is very very popular in the field of gis which is a proprietary software it is given by the isri then there is intergraph corporation then there was a book called design with nature who was the author of this book it was ian mekhag okay actor and you know say all these things loudly Okay, if you just listen everything, you will not remember. आप जब तक अपने end end पर बोलोगे नहीं, है ना? यहाँ mic on करा करके सबका access सुनना possible नहीं है. But आप लोग अपना जहाँ भी अपने घर पे बैठे हो, वहाँ पर जो चीज पूछी जाए, उसको अपने end पर जोर जोर से बोलिए. तब आपको ये सब चीजें याद रहेंगी. So who was the writer of this book, Design with Nature? It is Ian Mekhag. What was the specialty and why this book is mention over here because this book has given the concept of overlay analysis for site suitability okay that's why this book is very popular another important thing is in the year 1972 landsat 1 was launched landsat 1 is a, is an earth observing satellite system it used to give us satellite images and it provides free data to all of us so that's why in the year 1972 landsat launch is very important because it is a remote sensing data and that has started to provide the continuous observation continuous coverage of the complete earth after that there is next era era of commercialization or you can say maturing of technology in this era the companies that have established in the previous years they have started to produce they have started to give their software among them one of one of the very popular is 1981 arc info okay
So ARC Info is the major commercial GIS software, and nowadays we are using the ARC GIS software of that one. Then. GPS become operational in the year 1985. In the year 1986, there is a book. Remember the name of this book, Principles of Geographic Information System for Land Resource Assessment. OK. Yeah. Write down the name of the author. So it was P. A. Burrow. Peter Burrow was the author of this book, Principles of Geographic Information System for Land Resource Assessment. Then there is a file format Tiger. Okay, at your end, say loudly what is the full form of Tiger at your own end. Yes, it is. Topologically integrated geographic encoding and referencing. This is the full form of Tiger file format. Again, it is the product, it is the format of US Census Bureau. And which one was the earlier? We have just read it was DIME. Earlier in the, you know, <clears throat> in the year 1967, DIME was developed by US Census Bureau. In the year after 1967, in the year 1988, it was Tiger. What was the full form of Dime? Everyone, at your end, say loudly, what is the full form of Dime? Dual Independent Map Encoding. Okay. So these were the development, and after that, there was a development of web and there is a direct impact of the development of web on the GIS. And not just only it is about the web, you can also see the change in the hardware technology. Initially it was mainframe computers. The size of the computer was very large. It was very costly and usually used in the academic or research purpose only. But so, uh, gradually, there was a personal computer. The size of the personal computer is a small. The cost of the hardware has started to decrease. And the thing, the computer, the mainframe, all these things which were initially considered as something that belongs to government, that belongs to research institute, that belongs to academic activities, slowly and slowly it started to reach the reach to the common people. OK, and with the invent of the web and as the cost of the Internet connection becomes low, everything is now coming to the common people. They have the computers, they have the PCs, they have the Internet connection over there. They can use the web services over there. So this one has also impacted just like the common people. It has also an impact on the GIS and how we have seen all these changes in the real world. There are several developments that are related to this thing. Like one of them is in the year 1994, President Bill Clinton of United States has signed an executive order, which is EO12906, and that has given the creation of NSDI, National Spatial Data Infrastructure. How you can see the National Spatial Data Infrastructure? Right now, we will learn it in detail in the next semester. Right now, you can just thought about the SDI special data infrastructure like some portal. OK, you can go to that portal and you can download whatever you want. All the spatial data, OK, GIS related data will be available over there. So it is one of the, you know, it is one of the place where you can find several types of GIS based data. Government is trying to provide more and more spatial data. Government is trying to avoid the duplication of the creation of spatial data among the agencies. So 
There are several standards. There are several policies that involved in the creation of STR. So with the in, uh, with the creation of the concept of NSDI in United States, over the time several other European nations, several other countries have started to develop their own NSDI. Then in the year 1994, a major development in the field of GIS is the establishment of Open Geos GIS Consortium (OGC). Nowadays we say Open Geospatial Consortium. So this is one of the body that provides us the standards, the protocols, so that the services become interoperable. You will not get stuck with your system, with your software. Like I am using, uh, say, um, I am using Mozilla Firefox on Windows and I am using Google Chrome or Linux system. So the service will be available in whichever type of combination we are using. It doesn't matter which type of web browser I am using. It doesn't matter which type of operating system I am using. The service will be accessible everywhere. Why it is happening? Because the services are interoperable. Later on, we will learn about the GIS servers. There will be a geo server. There will be a map server. There will be a degree software. So many GIS based software, server software are available. So even in that case also, whatever type of server there is, any type of client can access the output, the services of that one. This is all happening because of the standards which are provided by the OGC. Okay. So later on, as we move further, the era of exploitation or the in the age of information infrastructure, we have seen all the development are related to the online services. All the atlas, all the libraries of GIS is coming to the internet. People are able to access all these things. The amount of spatial data that is available to the common public has become large. And even the production of spatial data has increased a lot. There are several satellites, there are several commercial satellites that are available nowadays that provides us a very high resolution data. There is a lot of data which is producing through the people. We say VGI, Volunteer Geographic Information System. Since everybody is having a smartphone, everybody has smart devices, so the location could be accessed. So whenever you are going to some place, you know I am going from say from New Delhi to Kolkata. So people used to write it down on their Facebook or any other social networking website. So I am at IGI, Indira Gandhi International Airport. I am at IGI and I am going to there and there. What is happening at all these places? We are basically generating the VGI, geographic information, volunteer geographic information. It is not collected by some professional. These all are collected by the common people, by the amateurs. And they are just putting all this data. Wherever we are going, we are tagging that uh, image from some particular place. I am from MNNIT. So I am adding some image of MNNIT and posting that image. So even if you go to the internet and search to the GISL, MNNIT, Allahabad, Prayagraj, you will find the images of our GISL. So how this is happening? Because of the availability of spatial data. So in the era of exploitation, you will find a lot of services become online, a lot of data become online. There, an, there is an exponential increase in the production of spatial data as well as in the use of spatial data also. So this is all about the innovation of or the evolution of GIS. And if we try to summarize all these things, you can see in this table that you know, there are three different characteristics that are considered over here. Technical environment, major user and major application areas. So first thing is about the technical environment. I'm just giving you one minute. Carefully read this table. Okay, then I will describe you what is happening. Carefully read all the points of this table.
now you can you must be able to see the difference over the time okay in the formative years from 1960 up to 1980 there are mainframe computers proprietary software as well as data structure and most of the processing is done raster based okay now if we go move to the next era along with the mainframe computers there are mini computers okay and then there is a geo relational data structure then there is a development of graphical user interface before that most of the work is done in the form of cli command line interface mode but in 1980s onward there is a development of graphical user interface the acquisition technology there are several new acquisition technology over here you can see the gps has become available the more and more remote sensing data become available and if i move to the last era gi infrastructure now you can see there is a concept of workstations and pc nowadays okay so instead of mainframe and mini computers whose size is very large they are very slow now days you can see we have our own pc we have our own workstation okay workstation is just like the pc but it is more powerful then from 1990s there is the invention of web and the internet become available to the common public so although the internet has been started in somewhere in 1972 or 75 it has not started in 1990s but because of the invent of web which was in 92 or 93 it has become very popular open standards has been given in this era okay so that the things become interoperable in 1960 up to 80 you can see everything was proprietary no proprietary means it is license based you have to purchase everything from the vendor the product of one vendor will not get compatible to the another one like if you have a computer and if you want to buy a uh, printer then you have to check the compatibility whether that printer will work from that particular desktop or not nowadays we do not worry about it everything is about plug and play whichever uh, printer i am purchasing i just have to uh, plug that printer in my system install some drivers online and that's it everything will get work whether i am using dell whether i am using lenovo whether i am using hp whichever desktop whichever printer whichever laptop i am using there is no problem so things become open there is open design there is open systems multimedia has become quite popular and then more and more advanced data modeling database techniques have been come and there is a mobile computing yeah this one is entirely available in this era only that the people have started to have smartphones and whatever application is developed for the laptop or the desktop they also develop a mobile version and app for that thing also next comparison is on the major user and you can clearly see the difference in the initial years it was just only government university or military okay. after that from 1980s to mid 1990s there is an addition of business there is an additional addition of utilities over here like for the electricity company for the internet companies for you know from such type of utility and business the gis has been started to be used and afterwards you can see it has become available for the general public a new major user has been added over here and it is the general public and now the user is not just only in universities there is a schools also okay. then a major application in the initial years it was very much limited to the surveying okay surveying and mapping purpose so land resource management census you know uh, in the era of innovation or in the formative years you have seen that the several standards were given by the census bureau like dime tiger these all were given by the <clears throat> united states bureau of census and also some of them were given by the british census bureau so these are the major users or major application areas in the formative years and if you move forward 
you can find that more and more things are now available for the common public. So if we you see in the traffic information infrastructure, there's a market based on research and geographic data browsing. So it has now become available to the common people. There is a term called location based services. In short, we say LBS. What is LBS? Location based services. Quickly search about the LBS on the internet. And anyone of you tell what is LBS? Location based services. Ma'am, may I speak? Yes. The location based services refers to services that are based on the location of a mobile user as determined by this device's geographic, geographical location. Yes. Okay. So I will explain the same thing with the help of an example. It is the correct answer. Um, you know, suppose I want to buy some, say, I suppose I want to purchase a map. Okay. So I have decided uh, that I am going to purchase the microphone and the Samsung. So how we will go for the shopping such type of things? How do we usually purchase such type of thing? One method is that we can purchase it through online mode. Another thing is, no, I do not want to go for the online shopping. I want to physically go to that shop, see all the models of the microwave oven, and after that I will select one of them. So what I will do, I do not know where will be the showroom of Samsung in my city. First thing I will do that I will go to the internet, search about the Samsung microwave oven purchase or store, something like that. Automatically you will find that different Samsung showroom of your own city. OK, like I'm searching it from the Prayagraj, so I will get everything that is nearby Prayagraj city, like in civil lines, Katra, these are all the nearby places from my loca locality. So I will automatically get all the stores within the Alaba city. Okay, If you search the same thing at your end, the result will be different and it will be according to your location, your own locality. How this is answered? This is answered based on your own location. Okay, Suppose I want to eat something special today. Okay, So I'll search best restaurants in the nearby location. Automatically it will find the best location. I am not going to enter my location but it will automatically find my location. It will ask whether you will allow the device to access your location. If you say yes, it will automatically search the nearby restaurant and give you the result. What is happening right now? Whatever device, whether I'm using my laptop or whether I'm using my mobile, each of the device is accessing my position. Okay, And based upon my position, based on my location, the answer is given whether it is a restaurant, whether it is some showroom, whether it is some petrol pump or anything else. All these answers are based on the user's location. That's why they are called location based services. Now, nowadays, the location based services are very popular because we are getting the result based upon our location. These results are much more refined than the general answer because it is pinpointing you. It is giving you the result according to your own location. Whatever services you are using, whatever type of food delivery services you are using, you can find the same thing that they are going to give the result based upon your location. So that's why LPS, location based services, become very popular nowadays and it is one of the major application areas with the availability of smart devices, with the availability of GPS, on your smart devices, such type of services are popular nowadays. Okay. So this is all about the evolution of GIS. 
what you have to do you have to read all these things you have to read whatever is provided to you all the major events and other things that is provided to you and apart from that you also need to go to the internet search about the evolution of gis and other things two books have already been given to you principles of geographic information system and another book is of ian hebert okay so you need to refer these books also in some of the books you will find a very good and interesting detail of evolution of gis and we have already learned a lot about the evolution in last as well as in the present lecture now i am moving to the next topic which is about the components of a gis what is component component means if we are going to create a gis what will be the part of that particular gis okay so this is what the component is how the gis will get created what are the constituent elements of that one okay so if we see the components of gis you will find hardware software data people and infrastructure first one is about the hardware okay so what will be the hardware for gis anyone among you what will be the hardware for gis monitor yes keyboard Yes. And microchips. Yes. And hard drives. Yes. And everything which is related to computer systems. Okay. Yes. Anyone else? Satellite tracking system on the embedded on the chip. Light tracking system embedded on the chip. Like if you have, um, if your mobile is compatible with GPS, it will only use GPS or GlossNAS. It will, it will only use GlossNAS, etc. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So one of the general answer is whatever computer hardware it is. Okay, it will definitely be the part of GIS hardware because we are working on the computers. So whether it is a computer monitor, we need a very good quality of computer screen, and usually it is recommended to take the monitor or the screen of bigger size because when we do the analysis uh, over the time in the laboratory session, you will find that. Uh, you know uh, you it will be very hard to concentrate when you work on the laptop although everybody have to work on the laptop because of the limitation of the resources but still it is recommended that go for a high resolution good quality computer screen then certainly there will be a keyboard there will be a mouse there will be processor and again high means high performance processor Processors as well as memory and other things is required because the size of the data is quite large in GIS. If you are working on the lidar data and other things, you cannot perform the analysis by any by any of the obsolete hardware because it will need a lot of memory, a lot of processing power. So at least a high quality of a processor, large memory is required for the computer. that is used for the gis now apart from this computer thing um, you need the speakers and other things because nowadays multimedia is also getting embedded with the gis applications so when we talk about the multimedia it automatically audio and video images and other things for that purpose there will be any requirement of uh, this uh, speaker and microphone and other things then we need printers okay now it is not a simple a4 size printer many times you will find that the size of the map is very large it is not of a4 size if some of you are coming from the civil engineering background you may see the hard copy of paper 
maybe i do not know but if you see the size of that paper map it is very large and it will not be handled by the simple a4 size printer so we need special type of printers next requirement is the scanners you know when we work on the gis we need to convert that hard copy paper map into a into an image format so that we can visualize all these things on the screen like in the previous laboratory session on the monday laboratory session you have the topographic map how that topographic map has been obtained there was a hard co copy of paper map that got converted into a soft copy so for that conversion what was required there was a requirement of scanner again you cannot use simple a4 size scanner for this purpose you need special type of scanners for this purpose later on we will learn about the different types of scanners like feed forward scanner drum scanner and others so there is a requirement of scanners also then if you are going for the data collection what type of devices are required it will again come under the hardware whether we are using some gps receiver whether we are doing some sort of surveying anything like that so it will come under the hardware then how we are going to store the data so if the size of the data is small then it's okay otherwise we will need the hard disk to store the data again like suppose there is a lidar survey of your city nowadays lidar is quite quite uh, you know popularly used in the surveying of roads you can uh, search about this on the internet how lidar is nowadays is used for the railway corridor mapping road mapping and other things in that case the size of the data will be very very large hundreds of scans will be required for that purpose and even a single scan will may range in gb gigabytes so you can assume what will be the size of the final data set in that case again how you are going to store that data whether you are going to purchase the hard disk whether you are going to purchase the server hardware whether you are using some tape uh, tape drives or other things okay because the cost also matters you simply cannot always purchase the hard disk right now we used to purchase two or three hard disk at most of 2 tb size or 1 tb size that's it but when we have such a large amount of data how we are going to store that data so everything like that will come under the uh, gis hardware component there is one more thing called digitizing table nowadays we uh, we used to perform the digitization everything on the laptop or the computer only in the coming laboratory session means on the next monday we will learn how to perform the digitization but in the past digitizing tables were used to perform such type of digitization this is all about the hardware that is needed over that is required okay requirement of a tablet there can be and a gps so that you can on the ground surveying so the different other devices that are so it's very once you have the rest of the ma'am your voice is ma'am why is it breaking okay just wait for a minute
Okay, now is it okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to start. If there is any problem in the in the audio, please inform. So we were discussing about the software. That software is also important, and there are different type of tasks that can be performed with the help of software. These are listed in the in the end. Data input and verification. data storage and database management data output and presentation data transformation analysis and modeling all these task is is performed with the help gis software okay if we see the very first thing it is about the data input how we are going to input the data inside the system like you have done the geo referencing in the last laboratory session how you are doing that thing you are doing that thing with the help of a gis software after geo referencing you have to do the digitization again that thing will need a software so for the data input purpose complete data input is done by the help of a software then you can see in this particular slide that there is how the data get input there are different sources like existing digital data set Field observations, sensors, converting images, or map. This is all about the data input. So whether you are getting the data with the help of some map, or whether you are getting some data through say, uh, you know, you have taken the handheld GPS and go for the field survey. And once you have collected the data with the help of a GPS receiver, what you need to do, you need to convert that data. convert the data that is collected through the field survey back into the gis friendly format again in that case also you will need a gis software so whatever form of data you are inputting into the system whether you are doing it with the help of some map whether you are doing it with the help of some image whether you are collecting some field data everywhere you need some software so that it will get converted into a proper gis format once data is input into the system the next thing is you need to put that input data into a geographic database or a geospatial database in the database as you can see in this particular diagram 1.5 there are three parts location attribute topology okay location means spatial location the latitude longitude or the xy position with every location there will be an attribute associated with that location suppose i have collected the location of all the schools so the latitude and longitude or the x and y value of that school will be the location but along with that i need to put the name of the school the name of the number of students enrolled in that school all these information will come under the attribute means whatever characteristics are associated with that particular lat long in our case like in this particular example i am discussing about the school so the location of the school like the location of mnit say 81.25 or something like that so the latitude longitude value of the mnit will be the location attribute will be number of students number of faculty number of courses NIRF ranking. Yesterday we got the NIRF ranking of our institute. It is forty-two. Okay, so you people may also seen that thing that the NIRF ranking was uh, given by the Education Ministry yesterday. After that, once the geographic database, the location and attribute thing is added. The third thing is about the topology. so as we have discussed in one of our earlier lecture also what is topology topology is basically giving you the relationship among the nearby object like uh, like say i am saying that there is an mnit campus then there is also a, a residential campus over here so both uh, the academic campus and the residential campus are adjacent to each other okay so this is that they are adjacent to each other this is the topology it means that we are trying to tell the relationship among the objects like 
there is a road a and there is a road b both the roads are connected with each other so this is connected with the another road this connectivity information is topology okay within the mnit campus there is an administrative building so administrative building is contained by the academic campus of mnit so this containment information is a topology so basically what i'm trying to say that when you have different object and when you try to define the relationship among them it is called the topology another way of telling the topology what topology is that we were discussing earlier that and if you try to stretch that rubber sheet if you try to bend that rubber sheet whatever doesn't get changed it comes under the topological property like suppose if you draw two circles okay on a balloon if you draw two circle there is a one circle and another circle on the right hand side now if you put some air inside the balloon and if you increase the size of the balloon again the left and right suppose a is coming to the left of b it will remain same whether the size of the balloon increases or it decreases suppose a is placed inside b okay and now if you are putting if you are trying to change the size and shape of the rubber sheet even in that case also a will remain inside b it is not going to pop out from the b so such type of properties that remain unchanged even after the scaling even after the bending stretching and other things it come under the topological property so adjacency connectivity containment all such property are the topological property whenever we need to build a geographic database we have to build all these three information location attribute and topology okay so this is done with the help of again with the help of gis software and if we say uh, for the data input when we talk we have the gis software like you can use arc gis you in the laboratory session nowadays we are using quantum gis q gis so any such type of software can be used for the data collection purpose okay for the input your purpose you can use arc gis you can use q gis you can use elvis you can use any other such type of ma'am voice is not coming Mam, why is it? Please, whether my audio is okay or not. Mam, last thirty second, whatever you said, nothing was audible. Right now, am I audible or not?
Okay, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if there is any break or any problem in the audio, just inform it immediately. Okay. Don't write it in the chat box because when you know when we are explaining anything, the screen the screen that is shared with you is open in front of me. Okay. So I will not see anything that you are writing in the chat box. So if there is any issue regarding the audio or any other thing, just unmute yourself and tell us about that thing. Okay. So whether you have heard anything about the location attribute topology or not? Yes, ma'am, that was finished. Yes, ma'am. Okay. After that, I was telling you about um, that for the data input purpose, we use the software like ArcGIS, QGIS, okay? Such type of GIS software, GeoMedia is there. So we use such type of software. For the creation of geographic database, again, you can create some of the database inside these softwares itself. But when we go for the dedicated geographic database, we used to install the Post GRE SQL. There is a software like this. I will show you. Okay. Uh, I hope it is visible to all of you. There is a software, this Post GIS Post GRE SQL. Okay. I mean, it is a database, na? Post GRE. Yes. yes. Post GRE SQL. Yes. This is the complete name Post GRE SQL and Post GIS. It is just wait for a minute. It is opening on. Now on, on the screen you can see that I have opened this post GRE, the PG admin interface of this particular software. Post GRE SQL open source. So any one of you can install this software on your own system if you want to work. And basically, you know, this part is not in our course, but uh, this software is freely available and there are tutorials that are available online. If any one of you is interested in such type of software because this will increase your skill in the field of GIS. So try to use this software. Okay. So as an AK then may up sari cheese a seek job. Up the system pay is install karlo, but dhyan rakega ki aapka system jo hai wo slow nahi hona chahiye because aapne already QGIS installed hai or probably aapke pass mein dusse software bhi installed honge. So koi bhi software jab aap install karen. उस समय ध्यान रखें कि वो आपका सिस्टम स्लो अगर नहीं कर रहा है तो आप इस सॉफ्टवेयर को अपने यहां इंस्टॉल कर सकते हैं इसकी वर्किंग को देख सकते हैं इससे रिलेटेड ट्यूटोरियल्स देख सकते हैं थोड़ा बहुत कुछ कुछ चीज से प्रैक्टिस कर सकते हैं सो एट लीस्ट यू गेट अवेयर अबाउट दिस इंटरफेस दिस पीजी एडमिन विद द हेल्प ऑफ व्हिच वी वर्क ऑन द पोस्ट जीआरई एसक्यूएल ओके सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द डेडिकेटेड Spatial database software and in most of the application you will find that people are using this PG admin. Why? Because it is open source. Otherwise there are some of the proprietary options also, but this is one of the software that is completely dedicated for the spatial database. Otherwise we may get the database, but database software, but they are not dedicated for the spatial database. Like there are the Oracle database also. So there's no problem with that, but many times you will find that they are not supporting the spatial data as much as this particular software is. Okay. Now, after the database, there will be transformation, there will be analysis, manipulation and other things that will take place. Again, we need the software for that purpose. Then for the output purpose, 
for the display of the output, whether you are displaying the output in the form of map or any other thing, you will need again need the software and then there will be a transformation and whatever data you are transforming or changing with the help of that you can give the output or maybe you need to save the copy of that one for the later use. So this one is a constant process that will be done with the help of a software. Now the third component of the GIS is people. You know GIS is incomplete without the people. You need the people who work on the GIS. So in GIS we need people who will collect the data, who will develop the GIS application. There will be administrators. Then there will be a people who are using that data. So in GIS there will be a people. And it is a people centric system. Then infrastructure support. We need the infrastructure support like you know uh, there is a requirement of certain type of skills, certain type of hardware, certain type of standards with the help of that GIS will become operational. That's why one of the component that is required in this process is infrastructure. The last and the most important is data. Data is the most important component. Without data, there is nothing in GIS. The collection of data, the creation of database itself is a very big task in GIS. In some of the literature, we will find that they say that 60%, 50 to 60% of time in GIS application is spent on the creation of database only. Okay, so you can understand the importance of data in GIS. It take a lot of time to collect that data, to clean that data, to finally store that data for the GIS. And in the later lectures, we will learn a lot about the data, about the raster, vector, how they are getting stored and other things. Okay, so this is all about the component of GIS. There are five component, hardware, software, people, infrastructure and data. And we have discussed about them. In this PPT, you will find after that there are some of the people like uh, that are related to the GIS or that are related to the map making or other things. So go through all this thing, read yourself about Roger Tomlinson and this Prince Henry, the navigator. And that's it for today. In the next session, in the next lecture, we will learn about the geodesy. We will learn about how we are going to measure different type of thing. What is datum? What is vertical datum? What is horizontal datum? What is latitude? What is longitude? What is the shape of the earth? What are the parameters that are used to define the shape of the earth? And then what is the coordinate system? So this is all that will be covered in the next lecture session, which will be on next Wednesday. Now we are going to have our tutorial session. Okay. Now what you have to do in today's tutorial session, I will show you. My audio and screen is properly visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma now see this thing very. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm getting everything is properly visible and audible to everyone. Now what I am going to tell you, listen this thing very carefully because we have to do your tutorial with the help of all this discussion and it is not just only about the tutorial. You need to learn all this thing. Later on it will help you in your thesis work and other places. Now what we are going to do in today's tutorial, wait a minute, I will open through GIS. So if you remember in the laboratory session, you have done the georeferencing. Isn't it? We have done the georeferencing of one of the topo sheet, topographical map of India. So in that map, you have seen the adjacency index, what maps are coming in adjacent to the that particular map. In today's term, in today's tutorial turn, what we have to do, you need to collect all the adjacent maps, all the adjacent maps of the Allahabad city. How you will collect that data?
how you will collect that data you will collect those maps from the survey of india website okay there is a survey of india website over here from here opt map just wait up for a minute i am just coming Okay, so in the last time you have used this G forty four P fifteen map. Okay, if I zoom in to this adjacency, this adjacency sheet, you will find that for this G forty four P fifteen, you have this particular map G forty four P fifteen, and if you want to extract the district boundary of Allahabad, which maps do you need? you will need p14 all these sheets okay all these adjacent sheets r10 sorry p10 this is not r10 p10 p11 p12 p14 p16 q2 q3 q4 and probably the one if when you download this p16 automatically you will get the information of the map which is coming below p16 got it yahan tak sabko samajh mein aa gaya यहाँ पर ये यह बताया जा रहा है कि आपको इलाहाबाद का डिस्ट्रिक्ट पूरा का पूरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट का बाउंड्री चाहिए यू ऑलरेडी हैव दिस पी फिफ्टीन मैप पी फिफ्टीन मैप आपके पास में है आपको लेबोरेटरी के टर्न पे दिया गया था एंड अगर आप इस एडजेंसी वाले को देखें इस पूरे मैट्रिक्स को इस ग्रिड से आप पाएंगे कि इसके पी फिफ्टीन मैप के नियर बाय लोकेशन में कौन कौन से मैप है हमें कैसे पता लग रहा है ये इलाहाबाद है ये इलाहाबाद का इन्फॉर्मेशन यहाँ लिखा हुआ है है ना स्क्रीन पर आपको दिख रहा होगा इलाहाबाद उत्तर प्रदेश यहाँ पर लिखा हुआ है तो ये पूरा का पूरा मैप जो आप बाउंड्री देख रहे हो कि इलाहाबाद की ही चल रही है तो यहाँ से हम जब P12 पे देख रहे हैं तो P12 के बाद में ये बाउंड्री खत्म हो जा रही है और रीवा मध्य प्रदेश का स्टार्ट हो जा रहा है इसी तरीके से पी को जब हम देख रहे हैं तो यहाँ पर इलाहाबाद की बाउंड्री खत्म हो जा रही है और बगल का कौशाम्बी डिस्ट्रिक्ट जो है वो स्टार्ट हो रहा है इसी तरीके से P10 को देखिए यहाँ पर इलाहाबाद की बाउंड्री खत्म हो जा रही है एंड प्रतापगढ़ का बाउंड्री स्टार्ट हो रही है सिमिलरली फॉर P14 प्रतापगढ़ बाउंड्री फॉर Q2 इट इज यहाँ पे भी एक खत्म होता हुआ दिख रहा है यहाँ पर प्रतापगढ़ और फॉर नंबर फोर मतलब जौनपुर जौनपुर का स्टार्ट हो जा रहा है लेकिन Q3 में देखिए ये पूरा का पूरा इलाहाबाद चल रहा है और प्रोबेबली इसके बगल में भी कुछ आएगा तो आपको इसके बगल में आने वाला माप ये आपको चाहिए होगा इसी तरीके से Q3 के बगल में इसी तरीके से Q4 के बगल में और Q4 के नीचे P16 और उसके नीचे ये सारा डिटेल आपको यहाँ पर चाहिए होगा तो अभी आपको क्या करने की जरूरत है यू नीड सम मैप्स कौन कौन से मैप इसको देख करके तो इतना कंफर्म है P10, P11, P12, P14, P16 ये सारे मैप हमको चाहिए होंगे तो ये एट मैप्स और नियर बाय मैप्स को भी आपको डाउनलोड करने की जरूरत है सो दैट यू कैन एक्सट्रैक्ट द कंप्लीट इलाहाबाद डिस्ट्रिक्ट बाउंड्री ये एक बहुत ही कॉमन प्रॉब्लम है जब कभी भी आप किसी भी स्टडी एरिया पे वर्क करोगे तो आपको उसका पूरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट बाउंड्री निकालना पड़ता है वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट बाउंड्री सॉरी मैम है नहीं 14 बस आपको 14 डाउनलोड करना है ये तो खत्म हो गया यहाँ पर ये बता रही कि आपको बगल वाला मैप डाउनलोड करना है कि नहीं यहाँ पर अगर आप P10, P11, P12 में देखेंगे तो यहाँ पर बाउंड्री खत्म हो जा रही है इसी तरीके से P14 पे भी बाउंड्री खत्म हो जा रही है लेकिन Q2 को देखेंगे तो समझ में आ रहा है कि राइट साइड में कोई मैप आएगा क्योंकि यहाँ पर ये बाउंड्री फिनिश नहीं हो रही है समझे 
क्यू थ्री पर समझ में आ रहा है कि इसके राइट साइड में कुछ होगा जहां पर बाउंड्री फिनिश होती हुई हमें दिखेगी इसी तरीके के से क्यू फोर के राइट में एज वेल एज क्यू फोर के नीचे भी हमें दो मैप की जरूरत पड़ेगी क्यू सिक्सटीन के नीचे भी हमें एक मैप की जरूरत पड़ेगी समझ में आ रही है बात तो इस तरीके से हमें पता लग रहा है कि हमें इतने सारे मैप्स की जरूरत पड़ेगी तब जा करके आप एक डिस्ट्रिक्ट का बाउंड्री पूरा निकाल पाओगे बाउंड्री कैसे निकालना है इट विल बी कवर्ड लेटर ऑन बट राइट नाउ व्हाट वी नीड टू डू वी नीड टू कलेक्ट ऑल दीज मैप ओके तो पूरे प्रोसेस का पहला क्वेश्चन क्या है दैट फर्स्ट वी नीड ऑल द टोपोग्राफिकल मैप्स हाउ वी विल गेट दो टोपोग्राफिकल मैप पी फिफ्टीन इज प्रोवाइडेड टू यू ये आपको दे दिया गया था इसमें कोई दिक्कत नहीं थी लेकिन बाकी के मैप तो आपको नहीं दिए गए और फ्यूचर में भी जब कभी भी आप थीसेस पे काम करेंगे किसी प्रोजेक्ट पे काम करेंगे कोई आपको हाथ में ला करके नहीं देगा या आपको खुद से जा करके लाना पड़ेगा तो ये कैसे लाएंगे हम इसका इसको इशू करने की एजेंसी कौन सी थी सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया इज द गवर्नमेंट बॉडी विच इशूज विच क्रिएट्स विच डिस्ट्रीब्यूट सी टोपोग्राफिकल मैप so what we need to do we need to go to the survey of india website and what is the best thing is that now what is survey of india is freely providing us this topo sheet sara data freely available nahi hai but yes osm open series map jisko hum log yahan par use kar rahe hain jo 1 is to 50000 ke scale par hai is map series ko freely available karaya ja raha hai aage ka step dhyan se dekhiye This is the Survey of India website. किसी को कोई भी स्टेप कहीं पे भी नहीं समझ में आए उसको तुरंत पूछेगा ठीक है वो स्टेप हम रिपीट करेंगे सो फर्स्ट वॉट यू नीड टू डू यू नीड टू ओपन द सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया वेबसाइट सो दिस इज द सर्वे ऑफ इंडिया वेबसाइट इन साइड दिस मैप सर्विसेस यू विल फाइंड दैट देर इज अ लिंक फॉर ऑनलाइन मैप पोर्टल got it you need to open the survey of india map website inside the survey of india website you will find map services in the map services drop down menu you will find that there is a link of online map portal over here so you need to click on this one so this is the online portal if you scroll down on this particular portal on the left hand side you will find that there is an open series map link okay agar kisi ko nahi dikhai de raha hai to wo bataiye so i think so it is visible to everyone on the left hand side there is an open series map it is saying free pdf there are other digital products also over here village boundary database digital map and geo referenced color raster so there are different types of maps that are available but the open series map is free so i am what i am doing i am just clicking on this one okay so once you click on this one you will see this interface open series map free pdf one is to 50000 so you need to enter the sheet number okay so if i open the first sheet is g44 p10 so what i will do g44 p10 okay i have entered this particular sheet number g44 p10 click on search sheet number okay there's some problem i'm clicking on this one state uttar pradesh district alhabad okay okay so there's no problem all the sheets are coming directly you do not need to enter the sheet number you just need to select the state and district i have selected uttar pradesh and alhabad over here and now you can see that there are eight sheets that are coming over here okay the eight sheets are coming over here you already have p15 so there is no need to download the p15 but rest of the sheets are not available to you 
so download like there is G44 P11. I am clicking select, okay, and then download. So it is saying, okay. So first you need to register over here, and once you have done the registration, you need to enter your mobile number, a password, and capture and simply sign in into the system. Okay. I hope so. This whole procedure is clear to everyone. In this way, you need to download all the topo sheets. And once you have done the downloading of all the topo sheets, you need to georeference each and every topo sheet. You will get the topo sheet in the PDF file format. There is no problem. It will get opened in the QGIS. But make sure that when you are saving that one while doing the georeferencing, you need to save it in a TIFF file format, tagged image file format. Although when we perform the georeferencing by default, QGIS take the TIFF file format. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, yes. please once again tell in what format we have to save. TIFF tagged image file format. You need to save your georeference topo sheet in the tagged image file format, TIFF file format. Make sure that TIFF is coming for the georeference data, although by default QGIS will take the TIFF file format. तो आपको शायद चेंज करने की जरूरत भी ना पड़े वैसे वर्जन सबके अलग अलग है तो किसी किसी में कुछ अलग हो जाता है बट बाय डिफॉल्ट आप देखेंगे तो वो ऑटोमेटिकली टिफ में ही सेव करता है यहां तक प्रोसेस सबको क्लियर है आपको सारी टोपो शीट डाउनलोड करनी है और आपको जियोरेफ्रेंसिंग परफॉर्म करनी है सारी टोपो शीट की और यह ध्यान रखिए कि आपको ऑल दो रिकमेंडेड था कि 12 पॉइंट्स लेकर के जियो रेफरेंसिंग करिए बट क्योंकि बहुत सारी टोपो शीट है और इसमें उस तरीके का एरर नहीं आता तो फोर जीसीपी लेकर के सारी टोपो शीट को इंडिविजुअली आपको जियो रेफरेंस करना होगा आज का ट्यूटोरियल क्लियर हो गया है सबको मैम लास्ट टाइम जो बताया फोर जीसीपी लेकर के जियो रेफरेंस करना इसका क्या मतलब है अब जियो रेफरेंस करते टाइम जीसीपी मार्क करते हो ना यस मैम तो जीसीपी कितने रिकमेंडेड थे और नहीं नॉट 12 12 यू सेड यस आपको रिकमेंडेड 12 जीसीपी होते हैं 12 टू 15 जीसीपी जब फर्स्ट ऑर्डर रिफाइंड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन यूज किया जाता है इन दैट केस वी गो फॉर 12 टू 15 जीसीपीज ओके इट इज रिकमेंडेड नंबर बट क्योंकि नंबर ऑफ टोपो शीट बहुत ज्यादा है और टोपो शीट में एस सच कोई एरर नहीं है आप चार जीसीपी लेकर के भी करेंगे तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं होगी आपके काम को जल्दी कराने के लिए ये काम बोला जा रहा है कि आप सिंपली फोर जीसीपी लेकर के हर एक टोपो शीट को जियो रेफरेंस करिए क्लियर है एनी अदर क्वेश्चन 